you and Bridget well. Of course. I just... The flames soothe my mind, as do the tales told here. You'll have one to share, Gunnar. A legend of Svatel fame. Aye. A story of a king who could not see the wood for the trees. Ravenmar, greatest of dwarven kings. Within his palace in Gulnamar, he wanted for nothing except an heir. Ravenmar and his wife had grown old. Perhaps too old. Late one night, consumed with worry, Raidmar walked in the shadow of his vast mountain top palace, tears in his eyes. The great king, what ails you? A voice said, afraid. Raidmar so no one. Who goes there? He replied. Then he saw who addressed him. A vast and ancient tree. Perhaps almost as old as Ymir himself. Raidmar sat upon its roots and told the tree he feared he was too old to give his subjects the legacy they deserved. The tree was so moved, it wept and offered its tears to Raidmar. Drink, great king, it said, and your woes shall be washed away. Raidmar observed the grass, the meadows, the leaves of the tree. His subjects' happiness could be seen in how they cared for the land. His legacy was all around him. Raidmar felt at ease, realizing he had everything he needed, and asked that the land receive the tree's gift instead. The tree's happy tears flowed evermore, enriching the land. Nine moons passed, and a baby's cry rang through Raidmar's palace. Long would dwarves place gifts in the weeping tree's roots, in memory of Raidmar and his kindness that shaped all he touched. All things happen when they should, old friend. I hope so. The fire made me think of the myths and legends Sven lost. Would you indulge me with a tale? I would be glad to hear of Svartalfin. I would not tell it half as well. But his favorite was a fable to remind us to find meaning in our deeds and not in how others think of us. Svartalfin was not short of legendary dwarven blacksmiths. Everyone has heard of Ivaldil, Brokkr, Sindri. But this tale is of a stonemason. He lived as far south as he could, where Gunnamar meets Vanke. His workshop sat upon the shoreline. Obsessed with glory, his love of masonry had all but died. He scoured the shore, seeking precious stones washed up from other realms. Then he saw it. Something beautiful glittering, shimmering across the water. Upon an island he had never dared travel to. He hastily built a boat, working long into the night. He set sail and found many rocks that sparkled and dazzled upon the island. He cried out in joy to craft anything from such stones. 
he would be remembered for all time. Then he felt a sudden sting on his foot. Then another, and another. His eyes adjusted to the dark. So consumed was he by his desire for renown, he failed to realize he had walked into a nest of snakes. Until it was already too late. And so, clutching the stone that sealed his fate, there he died. Remembered, yes, but only for his folly. A fine tale, Toby, and well told. This man would be proud. been spending too much time drinking Vulgar's special sauces again. I am troubled by visions of Odin and of Svatsalfim. They flood my mind without warning, without invitation. Aha! Which is how Thor flooded Svatsalfim. Thor, fast to act, but not so fast to think, would stomp and thump. Fight and bump everywhere he and Mjolnir should go. One day, he fought a giant in Jotunheim with such ferocity that Thor's killing blow was felt through all nine realms. The ground shook, mountains rose up, hills tore apart, creating canyons, and north of Svaladal, the massive lake that housed the springs of Yggdrasil. Split open, flooding all of Svartalfheim. The dwarf king, Kraithmar, acted swiftly. He built three mighty dams, preventing further damage to his realm, working alongside his beloved subjects. So surprised was one builder to see the great king working as an equal that he slipped, tumbling into the raging waters below. Without hesitation, Raithmar leapt, once from his horse, and again from the center of the dam's lip, diving into the frightful torrent. Before the Builder could even cry for help, Raithmar was pulling him onto dry land. And so two giant statues were built to honor the king, one for each leap of unthinking bravery, and stood until the end of days. Until Ragnarok. Aye, so you see, actions ripple outward, like a stone falling into a lake, or like Thor crushing a Jotun skull with Mjolnir. Affecting everything, whether foretold or unknown. I fear my tale has only worsened your concerns. Hmm? No, a good story is a lark that feeds a mind's flame. Thank you, friend. You're safe now. I suppose I should thank you. Would have killed them all myself, of course. Why do you think they caged me up? Scared of me, they were. <laughs> that is one explanation. In any cage, um, case, you should find somewhere safer than here. If not for your sake, then for any giants you may slay. You make a fair point. Still, you help me out, and where I come from, we repay acts of kindness. Meet me in the Hodder Shelter. You know of it. Great big treasury hall, yes? I'll sort you out with something. Oh, and if you're looking to smash a few more deserving skulls, this lot kept talking about their leader. 
mean bastard, I reckon. If I remember right, sounds like you'll find them in a small valley by the swamps east of Abolvat Milna. Perhaps I will seek out this leader of theirs. Then I shall look forward to hearing of your battle back at the Hodder Shelter. You make them bastards pay, eh? Good luck to you. Glad you made it back. Ah! The reason I don't have lungs full of swamp muck. Here. It's not much, but I'd like you to have this. I know better than to refuse one as mighty as you. Thank you. Whoever gave the orders to torment these two. Some of my uh, attractive uh, wares. Everything is half the price of yesterday. Half the price? That seems generous. Well, I doubled the prices yesterday to make a profit, but nobody bought anything. So, half the price today. You haven't been doing this very long, have you? It's my second day. Isn't there someone more experienced to show you the ropes? Nope. I saw a gap in the market and I went for it. Why? Aren't they doing a good job? No, no, it, it's, it's not that. You think I'm awful? You do, don't you? <laughs> this is a ploy to persuade me to buy something. Is it working? Uh. Isn't there someone more experienced to show you? Uh, is it... uh, goodbye for now. There are more of these Jotun leaders I must seek out. I'm sure I know you. I sometimes think Reda makes these up just to keep us all busy. Thank you for taking the contract. So? You shouldn't be here! Hello there. I bring word from Ivaldi. What do I care? Go talk to the Ganger. Ganger? Yeah. The chief. Name's Oakland. A word, my friend. Evil D requests your aid. <laughs> Ain't my concern. Go talk to Ogler. He's the master of this workshop? Master? <laughs> nah, but he's chief when the masters ain't here. You should go speak with Ogler again. What do you want? Evil he sends me. He requires the help of a skilled artisan. A meeting of minds, huh? Well, it ain't up to me. You'd best talk to Brokker or Sindri. They still breathe? Where are they? No idea. Sindri went off adventuring. He does that. Mind you, it's been a while since he left. How much of a while? Couple of weeks. And his absence doesn't worry you? Not my business where he goes. And Brooker? Went to look for Sindri. <laughs> Bit of a worry guts, that one. Ever since he mucked up the forging of Mjolnir. Anyway, look, leave your name and I'll pass it to Brooker when he shows up. Tell him Harvey of Asgard was here. Harvey of. by Ymir? Really, it is you? I'll return tonight. In the meantime, fetch Ivali. He's at the old workshop ruins. Awesome. So many starving dwarves produce so much shit. Free 
three times it stung me. Three on the hand, then the neck, oh, then on the eyeball. A true master would ignore such trifles. Trifles? That gadfly was the size of a squirrel, a big one. An ogre could tear me limb from limb, and still my severed hands would finish the job. That is focus. That is passion. That is horseshit. Master Broker, I'm glad you have made it home. And your brother? Did you find him? Yeah. You never did say where he was. I believe Sindri went adventuring. Adventuring? No, no, that's not it. He went to find the special mead. Had a hankering, he said. Special meat? Yeah, the special meat. Sutunga's special meat? What's that frosty ass guy do with it? We ain't in Jotunheim in case you hadn't noticed. Well, there's this mead they make down at the brewery. So sweet, it can. It, it can. Uh, well, it's bloody sweet, all right? Anyway, Sindri had an itch for it. Just a horn or two, he said. So, off he goes. That was half a moon ago. I told him not to do it. Too many giants out there, but he wouldn't listen. Uh, him and his cravings. Where can I find this brewery? Aethorpe, southeast of here, other side of the marsh. Can't miss it. You're going to rescue him? I will find him, yes. And afterwards, you and he will repay me by helping Ewaldi with the job and he'd done. Now, hold on. We didn't, uh... Good, good. We have a deal. That gadfly? It was Loki. Thor himself could not have withstood the sting. Were you following? Is it too much to ask for the around here? You wouldn't know, Steve. Hmm. You wouldn't know decent if it sprouted wings, Did anyone flew up your arse sideways, and laid a golden egg. He prayed too! You wouldn't know decent if it sprouted wings, flew up your arse sideways, and laid a... No. You wouldn't know decent if it sprouted wings, flew up your arse sideways, and laid a...
such as Sindri's are of the lesson. Still, it can't be coincidence that Kalda sated the Salakar with the hookers of so many races. Muspel, the Jotun dwarf, who knows what else. Please let this not be our missing master. this you bring? No! It can't be! Master Broker, I share in your grief. Truly I do. Your brother was the worthiest of dwarves. More so than you will ever know. Oh, Sindri. No. No, my dear Sindri. Crafty way to cross the lake. Sindri, you son of a rock, where did you hide you? I was fun. You lied to me. You said you would save him. I said I would find him. That ain't my brother. Not anymore. What happened? Tell me. Everything. As I neared the village, I. I heard a great roar, like that of a wounded bear. Soon after, I witnessed the final act of a mighty battle. Sindri beset by giants on all sides. It was he who made the godlike roars. He, he always did have a deep voice. He wielded his hammer and chisel with uncommon skill. Yes, yes, I've seen him do it many times in the workshop. Giants lay strewn about, slain by Sindri's hand. But then, one of cowardly aspect struck your brother treacherously in the back. Yet even as Sindri succumbed to the blow, he lopped his chisel and struck the coward dead, right between the eyes. Sindri did all that? So it will be written. I must find a way to ease Broker's sorrow and make him amenable to my wishes. Now Broker is all alone. How will he manage without his big brother to guide him? How can I tell? Where could they be? There's something wrong, Basil. Everything is wrong. 
We're burying the greatest smith who ever lived, and we don't have his tools spares. He never took his best ones from the shelter. I see. How is it that such valuable instruments have been misplaced? Misplaced? Don't be daft. Hidden, more like. By Sindri? To make sure no one else ever touched them. Particularly Brooker. Except now we can't find them. You have no idea where they might be. Well, they're inside the shelter, I can tell you that. Well, they can't be too far. I wouldn't be surprised if they're somewhere up high. I thought dwarves were afraid of heights. Not our Sindri. He was quite the climber. Now me, well, I prefer to keep my feet on the ground right where they should be. I am very fond of the dwarves. Yet their constant needs is exhausting. Oh, Loki. Friend. Betrayer. What I'd give for a moment of your gilded conversation, even the lies. <laughs> if I was Sindri, where would... Where would I hide my beloved tools? Somewhere high up, perhaps. Let's see you, old friend. That nest looks like a promising hidey hole. If I had wings, I could reach it easily enough.
Finally, the tools of Sindri's trade. I must reunite these tools with Sindri's remains before the ceremony begins. The disaster has been averted. Oh, now I see why some call you God! You're making me blush. Still, I have my moments. Heroes die, but not their legacy. Such was Sindri's courage, that tonight he feasts in Valhalla, the first of his kind to ever do so. I'm here for the mead, not the company. You dwarves and your love of mead. It's cost me enough trouble already. It wasn't the dwarf who ransacked half of Jotunheim in search of some mysterious mead. <laughs> I wouldn't know anything about that. You know, old friend, now would be a good time for some grand gesture. Like what? A respectful speech from you. Sindri's greatest rival would surely... Ah, fuck off. You must all make compromises. I can even give you the honeyed words. Time soothes the well of suffering. Brings hope that sees beyond chill death. Recast the whirlpool of sorrow into the placid waters of the philosophic mind. Are those words for Sindri or Baldur? Baldur lives. Why would he need such words? Of course, of course. I, I, I didn't mean to... Well, you know. Fine, I'll do the speech. But it will be one of my making, not yours. We dwarves don't care much for poetry. Still... We can't set about making speeches until the torches are all lit up. Evil the has come. Perhaps he can be of use. My brother, a true master, he was, uh, I did not like Sindri, and he did not like me. Still, he was good with the hammer, and the chisel, and the saw. And he knew how to work the bellows. Some said better than anyone. Even me.
Broker, your brother was a very fine smithy. I... I admired him greatly. Master Broker, you've given Sindri an excellent send-off. It's the least he deserves. But is it really true he feasts in Valhalla? It is. I saw it in a vision. Come. Let's take a stroll. Now, tell me, are you prepared to continue Sindri's good work? Helping Ivaldi was not my brother's work. But the fine suitor was. It's what got him killed. Greed for mead is what got him killed. It took courage to go after that meat. A direct challenge to Sutra's authority. This is crooked thinking. Seems straight enough to me. You know, I don't reckon I owe you a bloody thing. I risked my life to retrieve your brother's body. Now I prepare to risk it again. For you and all of Svatalfheim. Bollocks! You ain't doing anything out of the goodness of your art. I know what you're after. I know all about your lad Balder. I have ears, you know, even in my grief. So, don't pretend you're here for us, because I know- Would you have me abandon my own son and strive only for your salvation? Okay, when you say it like that. I... I need time. I'm still grieving, you know? Let me think on it, all right? A little old think. Good to see you're getting along. So, Broker, do you accept your duty? Don't have much choice, do I? Last thing I need is a godly smiting up me ass. <laughs> Let this be the start of a beautiful new friendship. <sighs> to study the Salakar, I'll need the very best of tools. Too bad this workshop is lacking. Bugger off! I got more stuff here than you can wag a finger at. Doubt it. <gasps> if you find something you don't know how to use, just ask. <laughs> I'll be giving you lessons on how to use your Bickering own... Bickering dwarves. How unusual. Hey, sir, you return. What? You deal with a fire, nymph? Not this again. What news do you bring? My stepmother is stubborn. I cannot push too hard or she will grow suspicious. She has no interest in a trade. Interest, yes. But not yet the will. I don't understand. The Salakar is all but indestructible. You, on the other hand... Or not. She assumes she'll catch me, kill me, and retrieve the Salakar. Time is on her side. Then I must strip her of this illusion. If I were to make a nuisance of myself, one that cannot be ignored. Sinmara prepares to lead my father's next major invasion. But if I were to disrupt her plans, it may force her to the bargaining table. Sounds risky to me. I once plotted and carried out the murder of Emir himself. What do I care of risk? Well, since you put it like that... Where must I strike? At Af Alvat Milna. My stepmother develops a strange army. At Jofrsmida, she breeds beasts of war. And finally, there's Drekathorp, her supplies hub. 
I'll deal with all three. In the meantime, I shall return to Aetri. I will send word once my stepmother has become more... amenable. I'll return when I'm done, and I will expect answers regarding the Salakar. How can so many starving dwarves produce so much shit? <sighs> All right then, Bert, where do we start? Bert, if I knew that, Bert. I wouldn't be here. Miserable sod.
pigs run wild. Locked from the other side. Without these lands, no further beasts can be bred. No more piggies for use and butter. All that's free, he and I shall feast on the roasted flesh of these mighty pigs. But now St. Mara will negotiate Baldur for the Salakar, and then together he and I will steal it back. Understanding of the Sully. Oh, my back is killing me. Oh, your back. Sinmar's plans lie in ruins. I just hope you know what you're doing. Surely I should be asking that of you. Now, tell me, what does it do? I ain't got a clue. These light elves and they're sneaky. You've learned nothing? Whatever more than what you said. Such as? Well, for a start, there's a bloody dwarf in there. Anyone we know? No, nah, and it's not important. Dwarf Hoogers don't carry much weight. Not even mine. So, what does it contain? All I know is that it's more than Malviger, Calder, and some dwarf no one cares about. Fine. In the stories, what was the actual point of the Salakars? Hoogers were what vitalized them. But it was the magic that gave them their purpose. And that magic was different to each one. Magic? You mean Seda? Nah, some elf shit no one knows anymore. Except Sutra. That fire nymph? She sent word. And? Your plan worked. Shinmara's ready to barter, if it means getting you out of the way. Where? At the bridge leading to Fagarda. Light the beacon, and she'll come out with your lad. The power that the Salakar holds, it must not fall into Surtur's grasp. Uh, I'll reclaim it once Baldur is safe. Work! 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 I've got a bad feeling about this. You bring that which is sutters. 
Give me what is mine. And I will hand over what is his. Come midway.
this blood trail. Whoever was dragged here was badly wounded. Yet he was strong. It took at least four jailers to hold him. 